So we are on day 14 and I thought I would just do a two week reflection on where we've come from, what we want to remember to keep doing, where me and Gabriella are. Um, I guess I'll start with around day 8 to 11, I noticed some behavioral changes with our boys. Um, I had done some heavy metal detoxing with Orin a few years ago, and I noticed some of the behaviors came back. His um, his behavioral issues are more attention-seeking. He gets in people's faces, and he just cannot control himself very well. And I, he was doing it mildly on one of those days. Um, and I think he just needed some sleep. It's like his body was just cleaning something out again, and he just needed to sleep. And, kind of tapered off since then the girls have been really tired they have dark circles i mean not terribly dark circles but notice i can tell dark circles under their eyes probably similar to mine so we're going to keep juicing to help our livers keep cleaning things out i've noticed that while we're maintaining our school it's also important to take good play breaks i think playing or I am encouraging them to rest, but sometimes they just want to play Legos or just sit and do something that's relaxing to them. I kind of expect small little bursts of detoxing, coming and going throughout the weeks to come. And even on the full GAPS diet, I mean, some parasites are really sturdy and they stay in your body for a long time, six to 12 months. So you might have symptoms that are releasing those, I mean, long after the introduction portion of the diet. I'm going to talk about stool again. If you're sensitive to that, you can skip ahead. But personally, I started two, bri um, two probiotics two days ago. And I think I only took one yesterday, but the night I took two. No, I actually did take two yesterday. But the night I took two, I ended up having to go to the bathroom like four or five times. And that's it was fine. It wasn't like an uncomfortable, it was actually not cramping, but it was more liquid than solid. And I felt like, man, the probiotic must be cleaning something out. And we've been having a lot of ferments, Gabby and I, because we're trying to get the histamines under control. But that can also clear out your bowels. So, but yesterday was fine. And then today I had a perfectly solid poop and it was, um, actually had dark nuts, whatever. I haven't had anything that resembles nuts or food that's <laughs> not mush. So I'm wondering if I was clearing out some toxins. I'm pretty tired today. I was kind of sick to my stomach in the middle of the night. And you could look up the Chinese biological clock. There's different times of day that your body does clearing out of different organs, systems. Uh, I didn't know what time it was, so I didn't look it up. I'm assuming it's in my intestines or liver or something. I did end up taking one of my adrenal supplements this morning because I was just dragging. And since I've been limiting what I'm eating, I might be losing weight and that can be taxing on your adrenals as well. So just to protect myself a little bit and be able to make sure I'm feeling well enough to take care of the family, I took an adrenal um, through my naturopath I've worked. I work with her uh, on my supplements. Um, I did also wake up with some just mild rashing. It wasn't anything like a, a hives rash where it moves around and it's really itchy. It's almost like you can tell a detox rash. You have the, it's like acne would be. Your body's trying to get something out and it can't get it out where it usually goes, you know, through your urine or your stool. So... All these symptoms, I'm still hopeful that I'm progressing out of the histamine stage. I feel like I'm 90% better, but at any point I could quickly go back another 20%. And I'm not eating foods that are triggering histamine, so I'm not sure if it's just because I'm removing these issues, or this, the triggers, or if my body's healing. It could be both, it's probably both. Um, your body can probably take time to heal when you're not constantly be, being stimulated by more histamines. Gabriella is still having more breathing issues. Um, she's been eating a lot of the ferments that have been really open for a week. So I'm going to try to switch her and I over, as you'll see. 
into a new jar to see if that the histamines go way down when a ferment's been sitting in a long time. And these have been sitting in our refrigerator since the summer. So they should have a high antihistamine quality. So today we opened up a new, we're going to open up a jar of ferments. These are all uh, green beans from our garden and onions. I don't know if those are from our garden or not. So hopefully that'll help with some fresh ferments for Gabby and I. These have had been sitting like that for a day or two as people finish them off. So I'll let the other kids eat those ferments. And these are the ones. Oh. These are the ones that we just fermented a day or two. All those bubbles mean it's a great Mom. ferment. We have our apple cider vinegar. Um, that's going to take, a, like, I think a week. I take everything out and let the vinegar just sit. And then our sauerkraut, which still has three to six more weeks at least you can tell it's nowhere near ready i'm gonna probably make some more sauerkraut today just so we have a influx every three weeks of fresh sauerkraut because that's one of our favorite ferments uh, we i'll show you how to make that probably in the next day or two but for her i'm gonna have to find for more food options because the only cooked vegetables that she likes are broccoli she won't eat the cauliflower, zucchini, or carrots. We are tolerating yogurt, so that is very comforting to me. I'm making fresh yogurt every day just for me and her, which is kind of a pain with dishes and cleanup, but it's worth it because that's our protein, and I feel like I know she's getting a good protein source throughout this, um, this little tricky time that we're in. And then the vegetables with butter on them. I might have to find another vegetable that she can eat besides the ferments. She's still eating the ferments, so she's she has quite a few options, but depending on how she feels that day is what she wants to eat. Both her and I would much prefer to have everything the family's eating, a nice roast or chicken with all the other veggies, but that's okay, that's okay. Um, my morning routine is now juicing. I'm going to limit the sour cream and butter for everybody else because they end up eating, drinking the juice with their breakfast, which they put butter on in their eggs and they're getting plenty of fat and protein. Whereas me and Gabby need more fats right now. I think she might even have a touch of adrenal issues. So the fats will help her adrenals. So we're gonna have juicing, our probiotic and bacon. Cause the bacon's so fatty, the little bit of protein in it isn't terrible. We can tolerate it. And sometimes yogurt if we're still hungry. Be quiet. Okay, so we're, uh, for our pancakes, we're going to use pumpkin instead of zucchini this time. Um, everybody else is having eggs, avocados, and butter for breakfast. Lunch today, me and Gabby cooked up some veggies, had more yogurt. Everybody else had pancakes, as Bella just showed you. And for dinner, I'm going to put a roast in with some veggies. I'm not quite sure what veggies. I just have the five, four to five veggies that we've been eating, and I'll just decide that when I go to put the, the, the food in the crock pot. I also want to give you a few tips that you should be doing that I forgot to mention so far. So when you're eating your food, you should be chewing it up as much as possible. And then when you're drinking liquids, you should also be swishing it around your mouth. There is a saying that you should swallow your solids and chew your liquids. And that helps your brain connect what's coming into your stomach to make the proper enzymes and acids that need to be available to those foods. Another thing is not drinking a lot of water at meals. And I know a lot of people think that you should to fill you up, which is just silly. If you're eating nutrient dense food, you're actually gonna be full. And if you're eating enough high quality fats, you're gonna be full, you're not gonna overeat. And if you are overeating, you actually might be just really hungry because you've probably not had nutrition for a long time because you've been told not to eat fats. <laughs> like I had for most of my life. I mean, there was a point in my life I was drinking Slim Fast and eating margarine on my eggs every day and I mean I lost weight because I wasn't hardly eating anything but I was hungry and I think it was one of the things that set me up for all the issues I'm dealing with now here's a few items that you 
I feel like we're indispensable the first two weeks for us. You can see our crock pot, our blender, and our juicer. We use these every single day, sometimes more than once a day. And then the pots and pans, we have our stone from Miriam's stoneware or cookware. It's like a clay pot, cast iron pot, and our stainless steel. I do wish we had one more medium, smaller to medium sized pan for boiling water, but I haven't wanted to invest in one yet. It may be a different kind of pan. The cast iron is kind of tricky with eggs and I just haven't figured it out yet. Maybe somebody can give me a tip on that. You got honey and butter, Mary? Are they pumpkin-y? No, I don't taste any pumpkin. There's pumpkin in it and cinnamon. You guys like taste cinnamon? No, no. Dominic, does it taste like cinnamon? You know what this tastes like? Waffles. No. Waffles. Waffles dunked in maple syrup. Maybe you put too much honey. <laughs> so that's just a quick review for our two weeks into the Intro to Gaps diet. Overall, I think everybody's very thankful they started it. A lot of our constipation issues throughout the family and energy issues have resolved outside of the few days here and there that I think we're kind of, our bodies are doing a little extra. And generally i feel better i've figured out a lot taking the time to invest in my health and i can i'm so thankful i can help my daughter and not run and feel like i need an inhaler for her or whatever else medicine that would actually be making things worse on her body in the long term i'm hoping that we can just keep trucking along seeing little improvements and if not i'll go to my naturopath and see what what um items she's had to offer sometimes we've had to just do a symptomatic treatment with her to get us through something as we're digging deeper into our body. Now I want to share with you something very wise I thought our daughter said last night. And you might think that you might miss all these foods. And of course, we, we talk about Chipotle still. We talk about pizza still and ice cream and different things. Even if I was making them and we can't have them at the moment. Maple syrup, we can't have that for a while. But you might think you're going to be just be missing your McDonald's or whatever is your favorite thing, pop. But I think you'll realize, like our daughter did last night, that you might not. So here, I will let you see her. What did you say to me, Gab? When we're done doing the gap style, I feel like I want to just gonna, I'm just going to just going to just going to want to keep uh, do this again, sort of, like, but not like do it again. Stay like it. Yeah, like to stay eating on the GAPS diet and mm -hmm. nourishing. Yeah, I think that's very wise of you to say. Hey, remember you're beautiful. And you're the best. And you're the best. And you're the best.